morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or formulations or ingredients or health challenges, you or a loved one may be dealing with cosmetic issues, skin health issues. If you heard about something or read about something you want clarification on, 844-236-6010 is our number. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, order products right off the website, and you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. If you want to speak to a real live human being, 866-735-2470 is their number. And of course, if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our connective tissue building retinol 5% gel made with a big old dose of retinol, you're not going to find retinol in a 5% concentration anywhere. You may, if you're lucky and you know what you're doing, find 1% retinol, or I think there's maybe a couple companies that are selling a 2% product, but nobody is selling anything more than that. Certainly not a 5% product, certainly not a retinol product made with a big dose of vitamin C, fat soluble vitamin C, and of course never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, water, emulsifier, silicon, surfactant, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. I encourage you to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. On the bright side, we are still talking about connective tissue and the relationship between the health of the body's connective tissue, which is made up of fibers, collagen fibers, and elastin fibers, as well as goo, gooey substance, jelly substance. It's called the matrix, this jelly substance, the extracellular matrix. Actually, the extracellular matrix is a combination of the fibers, the collagen and elastin fibers, and this jelly material. The jelly material is kind of, uh, has the kind of consistency that you see when you add water to seaweed. This is why I always say it's important to eat jelly or gooey substances if you want to build connective tissue. The protein sugar complexes, they're called proteoglycans, and the long chains of sugar that give this, that give, um, that impart this jelly quality to the matrix. When you eat that stuff, you make your own matrix. It stimulates the production, uh, production of your matrix. So anywhere your connective tissue is breaking down, particularly in the skin and also in the digestive tract, you will find benefit by ingesting these jelly substances. And that includes fucoidin, which you'll find in Longevity's Fucoid Z, as well as other seaweed products. And the famous 
and well-known high aluronic acid. Even people who know nothing about health or the body or nutrition have heard of this stuff. It's in the news. It's advertised as being components of, of uh, skin health products. You're not going to really get much benefit for your high aluronic acid by applying high aluronic acid, but certainly you can eat high aluronic acid or supplement with high aluronic acid. And I highly encourage anybody who's interested in building connective tissue or keeping your skin healthy or keeping your joints healthy or building connective tissue in the digestive tract to supplement with 100 to 200 milligrams of high aluronic acid a day. It's a really inexpensive way to drive the production of connective tissue from an internal perspective. As we get older, this gooey substance becomes less gooey. And because this gooey substance is responsible for feeding cells, for detoxifying cells, and for oxygenating cells, I cannot emphasize this enough, the goo is how the cells get fed, how they get breathed, and how they get detoxified. This extracellular matrix jelly substance is the matrix. It's the mother in the sense that it nourishes and it oxygenates and it protects the cells. Unfortunately, as we get older, this gooey substance becomes more fibrotic. It has more fibers and less goo. And this fibrotic nature impairs the matrix, matrix, matrixes, I think that's the way you say it, the matrix's ability to detoxify and breathe and nutriate cells. It also becomes more mineralized. We become, it, it becomes stiffer as we become stiffer. It becomes hardened. Remember, the goo is responsible for the health of the cell, and as it becomes hardened, the cells become less healthy. And this is the relationship between the goo and healthy cells, and ultimately the goo and healthy us, because we're only as healthy as our cells will be, or vice versa. This is the relationship of the goo and unhealthy cells and unhealthy bodies. As the decades go by, as the effects of aging, uh, aging accrues, the mineralization and the fiber formation accrues as well. This stiffens the gel, and that's where the signs of aging appear. Not just in the skin, but all over the body, especially in the heart, by the way. Also in the brain and the nervous system. As we age, we become stiffer, and as we age, our bodies become stiffer. And this uh, visual stiffen stiffening that you can see as somebody gets older is the reflection of a stiffening that's happening inside the goo, inside the matrix. And when it happens in the skin, wrinkles will invariably occur. And there is not a wrinkle ingredient on planet Earth that will make a wit's bit of difference with the significant exceptions of vitamin C and vitamin A and perhaps, to a lesser extent, alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids, which we'll be talking about here uh, in a little bit. Of course, it's not just wrinkles, it's not just thinning skin that are, uh, are uh, that result from this, uh, these defects in the matrix. You want to regard all skin problems as connective tissue problems, as matrix problems. And that means if you're dealing with cystic acne, if you're dealing with eczema, if you're dealing with psoriasis, if you're dealing with sensitive skin issues, or if you're trying to accelerate the healing of wounded skin, you want to be applying the same connective tissue building strategies that you would for skin aging. That makes vitamin C and vitamin A important for all these skin issues. That makes internal supplements like hyaluronic acid and bone broth protein and internal vitamin C and internal essential fatty acids, essential fatty acid supplements and essential fatty acid rich foods important for all these kinds of skin conditions which involve the connective tissue. And of course it makes correcting digestive health issues which will impair absorption of these substances and staying away from matrix toxic materials like sugar, food allergens, cigarette smoke, it makes all of these strategies important for all skin health issues, for all connective health issues, for all health issues. This is the generic nature of health. It doesn't really matter what your diagnosis is. You hear us repeating these same ideas over and over and over again every day on the bright side. Correct digestive problems. Reduce your blood sugar. Make sure you're oxygenating correctly. Stay away from cigarette smoke and alcohol as best as possible. Make sure you're practicing spiritual, mental, and emotional strategies as well. Your skin will thank you. Your body will thank you. Your connective tissue will thank you as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got open lines for you. We will return right after this. Don't go away. Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks 
for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, we welcome your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. And of course, if you want to purchase our Truth Retinol 5% Gel or any of our Truth Treatment products, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, head over to truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, if you're wondering what product to purchase first, I recommend the Truth Serum first, then perhaps the Retinol 5% Gel, depending on what type of skin you have. Retinol 5% Gel is aggressive. You will peel. You will flake, most people, not everybody, but most people will flake a little bit. That's a good thing. Stimulating the production of connective tissue is dependent on exfoliation of the surface of the skin. We'll talk about that here in just a second. So, no matter what your skin health challenge is, you want to regard it, at least partially, as a connective tissue health issue, especially if you have sensitive skin, accelerated aging of the skin, or problems with healing the skin. Slow healing skin is also a connective tissue problem. This affects diabetics a lot as well, especially in the extremities, the arms, uh, the hands, the legs, the feet. The reason this is, by the way, the reason diabetics have such a problem with the extremities, extremities is because under conditions of illness or under conditions of deficiency or under conditions of inner turmoil, biochemical stress, the body will reroute blood to the center. This is also why people have thinning nails and also lose their hair as they get sicker or as they get more nutritionally deficient or as inner crisis, uh, the, the signs or, or the symptoms of inner crisis build up over the course of time. The body will reroute blood and reroute oxygen and reroute scant nutrients, if indeed the nutrients are scant, towards the center of the body and away from the extremities. This is also one of the reasons why, as we get older, our skin doesn't look as good. Nutrients are rerouted to the center of the body. And that's one of the reasons why topical nutrients can be so helpful. Topical application of topical nutrients can bypass some of, this re, some of these rerouting problems by putting nutrients or by delivering nutrients right to the surface of the skin. The relationship between the skin and connective tissue diseases is well known when it comes to, uh, or I should say when it, uh, the relationship between skin appearance and skin health and the connective tissue is well known when it comes to connective tissue diseases. Things like lupus and scleroderma and Sjogren's syndrome. Thing, the the uh, interesting thing about these diagnoses and what makes these diagnoses difficult to address and understand, especially by lay people, is the fact that while lupus and scleroderma and Sjogren's seem to be specific diseases, they're really not. They're generic manifestations of connective tissue breakdown. It doesn't really matter what your diagnosis is. If you have sim the symptomology of Sjogren's syndrome, for example, extremely dry skin, or the symptomology of scleroderma, fibrotic skin, or the symptomology of lupus, red and sensitive skin, it doesn't really matter whether it's called lupus or Sjogren's syndrome or, or scleroderma. What matters is just your connective tissue is breaking down, and it's the same exact kind of mechanism that occurs as we age, perhaps a little bit more accelerated if you're dealing with these disease states, which simply means that you're more toxic especially digestive, from a digestive system perspective and a sugar perspective. So these kinds of connective tissue diseases, which form a, a huge class of, of uh, medical diagnoses, the thing about these issues is they're basically the same kinds of biochemical processes that occur at, when we age if perhaps they are more accelerated. Despite the idea that these are different diagnoses from a healing perspective, you want to think of them as generic manifestations of connective tissue breakdown. And the same kind of strategies that we apply for anti-aging are important for scleroderma, for lupus, for, for uh, Sjogren's syndrome, for any kind of connective tissue illness, really for any kind of illness. 
the condition of the skin, if you're dealing with a connective tissue issue, the, the co condition of the skin can actually be used as a diagnostic tool for assessing and for monitoring the progress of these different disease states and seemingly cosmetic and superficial issues like alopecia, which is when you lose your hair, or telangiectasia, which is when you have red blood vessels that are appearing, particularly on the face, skin sensitivity, redness, sun sensitivity. These are all possible signs that there is connective tissue breakdown underneath. These are all classic symptoms of connective tissue diseases. I'm going to say a lot about connective tissue diseases lately, uh, later on. It's, uh, it's really an important subject, and its relationship to the skin is an important subject. I'm going to talk about what you can do about it if you're dealing with any of these connective tissue diseases in the coming days. But for right now, I want to finish up. We've been talking about skin aging for a while, and I want to finish, finish talking about just general skin aging. So we have access to the skin in a way that we do not have access to the internal milieu. This is obvious. And because of this access, topical strategies can be helpful. However, you got to know what you're doing. You can approach the issue of, the, uh, of skin aging from the surface level if you know what you're doing. And by the way, there are procedures like peels and exfoliation that work at the tippy tippy top, the stratum corneum level, the hard, uh, the, the hard protein and, and dead, uh, dead cell layer. The stratum corneum is made up of hard proteins and dead cells, and you can do some stuff. You can build connective tissue by just approaching the stratum corneum if you know what you're doing. This is why peels can be so, uh, so helpful, skin peels. This is why laser can be so helpful. This is why alpha hydroxy acid uh, products used at home can be helpful, and certainly alpha hydroxy acids, glycolic acid peels, and lactic acid peels that you do in an esthetician's office. And I recommend that everybody gets a, a skin treatment, a skin peel at an esthetician's office. You don't need to go to a dermatologist. There's Lots of smart estheticians around that can do a lactic peel or a glycolic peel for your skin on a regular basis. You do need to do it on a regular basis, and this is a misunderstanding about procedures, uh, peel procedures or exfoliation procedures. It's not so much the benefit that you get from one procedure, or, and it's not so much the benefit that you get uh, over the course of one, maybe a week or a few days after your first treatment. What really, where you really get the benefit from peels and from exfoliations is from doing them on a regular basis, at home on a regular basis basis, as well as at an esthetician's office on a regular basis. And by regular basis, I'm talking maybe every other day or every third day at home. And this is one of the reasons why our retinol 5% gel is so effective. Not only, not only because it delivers retinol and not only because it delivers vitamin C, but because of this exfoliation that you get. And I recommend folks use their, their retinol 5% gel every four days or every five days or every 10 days, depending on what your skin is like. Likewise, if you're going to do alpha hydroxy acids at home, if you're going to do a glycolic acid, uh, use a glycolic acid toner or apple cider vinegar, which contains acetic acid, which is another alpha hydroxy acid. Aloe vera contains alpha hydroxy acids. These are all nowhere near as potent as just straight glycolic acid, but you'll still get some exfoliation. Heck, you can use a washcloth to get exfoliation and to stimulate the production of connective tissue if you know what you're doing. And by know what you're doing, what I mean is not overdoing. This is so important because people will overuse. I've seen this for years. Folks will overdo glycolic acid. They'll overdo retinol. They'll overdo exfoliation techniques. And because they get irritated, they'll just not do it anymore at all. It's not the products or the ingredients that are causing the problem. It's the overuse. When it comes to exfoliation, the rest period is just as important as the stimulating period. I'll finish this up when we come back from our break and take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you, and we will get your calls here in just a moment, so hang on. Uh, I want to just finish up here what I was talking about before we went to break. We will be continuing talking about the importance of building connective tissue when it comes to uh, skin health issues in, in addition to, uh, in addition to uh, preventing the effects of uh, the signs of aging or reducing the signs of aging. We're going to talk about how connective tissue building strategies can help you if you're dealing with sensitive skin. And then we're going to talk about cellulite, which is a very interesting subject. And like other seemingly or seeming skin care problems. Cellulite is not a skin issue. Cellulite is a connective tissue problem. 
It has to do with broken down connective tissue. We'll be talking about that next week. Uh, so before we went to break, we were talking about how uh, exfoliation techniques can be important for driving the production of collagen and elastin in the extracellular matrix. And it is very important to stimulate the skin with exfoliation. I still hear uh, dermatologists and even, unfortunately, estheticians talking about not exfoliating and not using alpha hydroxy acids because they're too aggressive or too stimulating. This is boneheaded. This is silly. That's like saying don't go to the gym because it's too aggressive. Exfoliation techniques are like going to the gym. And here's the thing. There's a phenomenon known as overtraining, which bodybuilders and weightlifters and athletes and folks who are in the gym know about or at least experience. If you overtrain, you don't give your muscles a chance to recover, you're not going to get the benefits of your workout. And that's why the rest period is so important. The rest period is just as important as the stimulation, stimulation period. Exercises, the results you get from exercise are based on both stimulation and relaxation. I call it exercise. Exercise and rest. The rest period is critical because the rest period is when your muscles recover. If you're lifting weights or you're on the treadmill or whatever kind of workout you're doing, it's the rest period that allows you to leverage the stimulation period, that allows you to get the advantage of the, of the weights and the treadmill and whatever else you're doing to stimulate. Likewise with the skin. You don't want to overtrain the skin any more than you want to overtrain the muscles when you're in the gym. And this is the big problem when it comes to using these kinds of stimulating procedures. Whether we're talking exfoliation with alpha hydroxy acids or whether we're talking using a washcloth or whether we're talking peels or laser, whatever kind of stimulating procedure you're doing, exfoliating procedure you're doing, you got to maximize the rest period. That means you need days off. You don't want to overtrain in the gym and you don't want to over exfoliate in your bathroom with your skincare products. And this is the biggest mistake people make when they start an exfoliation uh, protocol, when they, when they try to leverage an exfoliation protocol for skin health. They overtrain. And then they'll say, well, I couldn't use that alpha hydroxy acid. It made my skin too irritated or too red. Yes, but it's not the alpha hydroxy acid's fault or the retinol's fault. It's the overtraining. It's the overstimulating. So please don't overtrain. Let your tissue recover. And as it's recovering, you will get the benefits of the stimulation. Got to understand the rest period and the recovery period. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see if I want to see what I got here. Uh, okay, let's, we'll go to the phones. I got a couple of stories, a couple of interesting stories here, but let's go to the phones. JD in Minneapolis, good morning. Yeah, Welcome I've to been, the Bright Side. Uh, see, I was wondering, uh, I'm 72 and I had a little light stroke two days ago. Oh, on no. On my left side, but it's gotten a lot better. Okay. At least 50% better. All I've done is just rest and take lots of, uh, well, uh, phosphatidylcholine and Good. multiple vitamins. And, and, how, do you, uh, how did you know what to do? How did you know what to do? Oh, I don't know. I just do it. Okay, good for you. Yeah, Make sure you it's like that, you get kind of nervous. Uh, good for you. Sometimes it takes something like that to get us nervous, unfortunately, but yeah. that's good. You're taking corrective measures. Lots of vitamin C. Lots. Grams a day. I would go oh. as far as I was. I would go as so far as to do IV vitamin C if you can intravenous, but at least orally, uh, three, four, five grams a day as soon as possible. Start today. Okay. Get on. If you're not doing the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, you definitely want to do that. Make sure you're using coenzyme Q10. Make sure you're using all the B complex in generous amounts. You may also want to get some uh, uh, intramuscular vitamin B12. Make sure you're oxygenating correctly, deep breathing. Make sure you're active the parasympathetic nervous system with hot showers and hot baths, the relaxation that you're doing, the rest that you're doing is a great strategy. But you also, once you, once you recover a little bit, you also want to get a little bit of exercise. Remember, that's important also right. for stimulating the production of connective tissue. So you're on the right track. If you're, if you're a sugar eater, I'd be going zero tolerance as best as you can. Uh, and bread and pasta, of course, are, they break down into sugar and, and, and root vegetables like potatoes. And uh, that can also be a problem, especially sweet potatoes. Um, vitamin A is also very important. Make sure you're doing zinc. Well, there's lots you can do, but it sounds like you're on the right track. But Anything? Sweet potatoes have got a lot of sugar. Oh yeah. Well, they're sweet. <laughs> they yeah. call them sweet potatoes. That's what's making them sweet. They, uh, sweet
sweet potatoes do have some nutritional value, and that's something that we find in the world of nutrition. Sometimes uh, this, the bad stuff is combined with the good stuff, and so you got to sort of, you know, just you don't want to avoid them, avoid the uh, the sweet potatoes necessarily entirely, but just be judicious in the amount that you're eating. Right. Uh, it, it, so you got to be a little bit strategic about these kinds of things. Are they um, better than regular potatoes? The baked. Potatoes? Yeah, there's more nutritional value in them. Regular yeah. potatoes actually have some nutritional value too, particularly in potassium. But they do break down into sugar, and you can do without them, in my opinion, as much as I love potatoes. But I you want to stay away I, from those, the French fry potatoes, because then you got to deal with the, the yeah, trans fats. I never eat that stuff. Baked potato, you know, it's not the end of the world to have a baked potato. I'll tell but you, Ben, what, what started this, uh, uh, I just got the hankering to eat some uh, pizza here a few days ago. Oh, yeah? And I had four of them on. Four <laughs> you know, slices? Every, you had four slices? You no, know, every other day. Wait a minute, you had four slices of pizza, you said? No, I ate half of it. Oh, you had half of it. Yeah, well, I, and I think that that screwed up something. I, I've had a little high blood pressure. Uh, what would you recommend for that? Relax your body. High blood pressure is a sign that the body's in an emergency condition. There's lots of nutrients yeah. you could use. Uh, the ultimate niacin from longevity is a powerful vasodilator. Opens up blood vessels, and that'll drop blood pressure. The interesting thing about medication, check this out. for uh, The Medicaid, J.D., listen to this. If you're on a beta blocker, a calcium channel blocker. No, I don't dr- take any drugs. Well, that's good. Because those kinds of drugs, which, and they do give them for high blood pressure, will dumb down your heart, turn down your heart. And that's an unfortunate consequence of, of a pharmaceutical uh, intervention for, for high blood pressure. I regard high blood pressure as a sign that the sympathetic nervous system has been activated. Of course, you do need to make sure that you're doing all the other stuff, too, making sure you're supplementing, uh, particularly with niacin. As I said, also uh, magnesium is very important for high blood pressure. Coenzyme Q10 is important. Just It's hard to isolate the specific nutrients because they all play a role. Uh, the, the ones I mentioned are maybe a little bit more important, but they all play a role. Keeping your sugar intake down and correcting digestive toxicity. You, you notice, J.D., if you've listened to this program, that I say the same thing over and over again because it's all basically the same idea. Make sure you use your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. Make sure you stay away from digestive toxicity and patch up a leaky gut. Make sure that you're oxygenating, breathing correctly. Make sure you're exercising. Make sure you're leveraging the power of rest and relaxation. Yeah, I'm a, uh, sunshine uh, is supposed to be good for it too, isn't it? What is? Sunshine, I was thinking oh, about yeah. the Florida. Oh Florida. yeah, love the sun, love the sunshine. Yeah. In fact, I was gonna read, that's one of the stories I was going to read here uh, about the sun, about sunscreens. Sunscreens, and I know we talk about this periodically, uh, but it's an important subject. This is an article that I got here. I'm going to let you go, J.D. Oh, okay. there, there's a break. Thanks, All right, take care, brother. All right, bye-bye. I'll, I'll read this when I come back from our break. This is uh, an article from uh, the University of Copenhagen about sunscreen ingredients. We'll talk about this when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here. 844-236-6010 is our number. This is uh, the story I was reading, or I was starting to read before we went to our break. This is from the Endocrine Society. Uh, results of a Danish study from the University of Copenhagen. Some sunscreen ingredients may disrupt sperm cell function. No kidding. Sunscreen ingredients are endocrine disruptors. They are not nice chemicals. And any healthcare professional who recommends that you always wear a sunscreen is a bonehead. Well, at least that's bonehead advice. Maybe they're not a bonehead in every fashion, but that's boneheaded advice. These are nasty drugs, sunscreens. 13 uh, UV filters that were tested induced sperm deactivation, disrupted sperm cell function. Eight of the uh, 13 UV filters that they tested, and that includes things like avobenzone, which you'll see in uh, um, some of the fancier sunscreen, uh, sunscreen products. The m- most famous sunscreen or the most popular uh, sunscreen, something called oct- octomethoxycinamate, also known as octinoxate, octocrylene, oxybenzone. These are all sperm and endocrine disruptors. And to apply them on your skin, and by the way, they are fat soluble, so they do bypass or penetrate through the stratum corneum. They are nasty, nasty chemicals. If you have to use a sunscreen, if you're out in the sun and you absolutely have no other option because burning is definitely not good, get it off your skin as soon as you can. 
and don't use products that compel you to use sunscreen ingredients, particularly eye creams. A lot of these eye cream products have octomethoxycinnamate built in, so whether you're out in the sun or not, you've got to expose yourself to these nasty drugs. There are a lot of nasty, uh, nasty chemicals that uh, are, in sun, uh, are in skin products, especially preservatives and fragrances and perfumes, but none are any worse and none probably, uh, none are worse than, uh, than uh, these sunscreen ingredients. Stay away from them, in my opinion. If you have to protect your skin using something topical, use zinc oxide, which will heal your skin in addition to blocking the skin, although it will make your skin a little bit white. Doesn't matter. A little whiteness, a little whitening is better than uh, endocrine disruption, in my opinion. And by the way, when we talk about endocrine disruption in sperm cells, we're also talking about endocrine disruption and the female hormone estrogen. So women are not off the hook here. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten. David in Austin. Good morning. Welcome to the bright side. David, do we got David? You there, my friend? Uh, I don't know where David is, but I'm going to put you back on hold, David. Hello. Hello. Hey, Hello. hey, David. Hey, hey. What's going on, man? Good morning. Yeah, Ben. Um, I use too many cortisol creams in the perineal area. Uh-oh. The surgeon has removed the perineal area, oh. but I'm still trying to rebuild it through glucosamine, chondroitin. It's not really working. By well, it's more than that. Way. Stay on that, it's, but it's definitely more than that. Uh, remember, glucosamine and chondroitin are not going to work to build connective tissue unless you have enough vitamin C. So make sure yeah. you're using vitamin C orally and make sure you're using vitamin C topically, fat-soluble vitamin C. In fact, if you send an email to ben at ksco.com and say David from Austin uh, and put your address there, I'll send out a uh, – and put, put your phone number there too so I can call you. Uh, I'll send you out a sample of my topical uh, – my Omega-6 healing cream, which has got a big old dose of, of fat-soluble vitamin C in it. And that, that's what you really okay. want to be using on the area. Zinc oxide can also help. Go get yourself some zinc oxide. And then you want to be practicing all the connective tissue building strategies that we've talked about over the last, I don't know, two months or so. Staying away from problem foods, uh, restricting your intake of sugar, anything that spikes your blood sugar, um, and making sure that you're using uh, a, a well-rounded nutritional supplement program. Not specific nutrients just for the connective tissue like glucosamine and chondroitin and, and such, but also essential fatty acids are important for building connective tissue, calcium and magnesium. I mean, the whole, you want all mighty 90 essential nutrients. I would also be using my bone broth protein. Go to brightsidehealth.com and get the bone broth protein and use that on a regular basis too. Have the right. steroids destroyed the Isn't mitochondria? That a, a, yeah, steroid, topical steroids can do a real number on the skin, especially sensitive skin, like in, in the anal area where you're applying it. Uh, it, it. Not a good idea, at least not in the long term. Maybe in the short term you'll get some relief, but a topical steroid withdrawal syndrome is a big, big problem. I've seen some horrible things happen to people's skin when they try to get off of topical steroids that they've been on for a while, uh, and it, it's, yeah. it's a, a, a hidden epidemic. Google, for anybody out there listening who wants more information, Google topical steroid withdrawal syndrome. And you may, if you Google it, you may find that that's something that you're dealing with because a lot of folks don't realize it, that they have this kind yeah. of problem where the skin, nothing works on your skin. Topical steroid withdrawal syndrome is when, you, when you've been using topical steroids for a long time, then you try to get off of it. And as soon as you get off of it, horrible things happen to your skin. I mean, rashes and it okay, looks like your skin's I burnt. I you because I've been suffering from, for seven years. Oh, I man. You at a Ben F O what? No, no. Just send an email to Ben B E N at K S C O dot com. Put your address and your phone number in there, and I will get back to you personally. All right, David. God bless you, my friend. Right. Good, good luck with everything. We'll talk to you soon, or we'll hear from you soon. I hope. All right, uh, Max, also in Austin, Texas. What's going on, Max? Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Thanks for calling. How can we help you? Yes, I'm calling uh, for my wife. Uh, we recently had the MRI and the doctor detects it was a, uh, there is a tumor in her brain and hmm. the last MRI shows and they said it's uh, past last year it grew a little bit and uh, she uh, the reason for her getting MRI is she has a seizure and that's what the doctor did the MRI on. Now, a, b benign tu a benign tumor, correct? Yeah, yeah. We don't know what it is. We don't know like exactly. 
what kind of tumor, but they just uh, show. But, uh, but I mean, she's she. Aside from her seizure, she's okay. She's not like emaciated and getting. No, I mean, it's, no. Sometimes she gets the seizure. It's not that okay. often. Sometimes. All right. That benign tumor is a growth, basically. The skin, the cells are growing. They're not growing appropriately. They're growing too fast. So uh, they're dividing too rapidly. So what you want to when that happens, you're basically dealing with cells that have flipped over into some kind of toxicity. Cell growth is tightly regulated. Cells, uh, it, cellular div, uh, cell division and cell growth is an amazingly complex phenomena that we take for granted. It occurs typically. It, it occurs without, you know, without any problems. But if you're dealing with a tumor or even cysts or, or, or fibroids or any kind of growth. Skin tags on the oh, topically, you're dealing with some kind of defect in how cells grow. Usually, that involves the outer portion of the cell, which is called the membrane. The membrane is made up of fat. So, the first thing you want to do when you're dealing with these kinds of issues is focus on fat absorption and fatty nutrients. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, also perhaps even vitamin K and essential fatty acids and then focus on digestive health. Now, your wife did not just wake up in the morning and have no problems, and then all of a sudden she got this tumor. There must have been other things going on, and that's what you want to address. You can't address a brain, a, a brain tumor on its own uh, or by itself. You have to address the system, the body, and that means all the things we talk about on this program, using digestive health strategies. She's uh, almost guaranteed. I can't imagine how she cannot have a digestive health problem with a, with, with a, a brain tumor. So work on the digestive system. System. Do intermittent fast, or I'm sorry, do a, a three-day fast or two-day fast or even a one-day fast, and then the elimination diet. If you don't want to fast, do a swear of cleanse. And then when you do the elimination diet, you write down everything you eat, or she writes down everything she eats, and then how her body responds. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. I know I say this over and over again, but this is very important. And then eliminate the problem foods. Patch up the gut. As well, using uh, the nightly essence from longevity, fermented foods, making sure you're using digestive enzymes with your meal, using lecithin with your meals, uh, apple cider vinegar with your meals, eating only when you absolutely have to eat, caloric restriction that is, restricting your calories, making sure she's stabilizing her blood sugar. Dysglycemia or messed up blood sugar is a major trigger for uh, inappropriate cell division and growth, so keeping the, the uh, cells uh, keeping uh, 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 your sugar, blood sugar down and helping your body process sugar using things like the B vitamins and chromium and vanadium. Make sure she's oxygenating correctly. Hyperbaric oxygen chambers can be helpful. Simple deep breathing can be helpful. And of course, relaxing the body is also important. Uh, if she wants to go all out, IV vitamin C, always a good idea. Intravenous vitamin C. And by the way, for anybody dealing with cancer, the literature on intravenous vitamin C is absolutely amazing and astounding. Uh, let's see what else I could tell you. Vitamin E can also help her, help her maybe 400 international units a day of vitamin E. Max, I'm out of time, buddy. I'm sorry, uh, so Max. I'm sorry, Max. We're just flat, uh, flat out of time, buddy. Uh, if you want, you can send, send me an email. Put your phone number in there, and I'll help you out. Send it to Ben at, ben, ben at ksco.com. Give me a few days to get back to you because I got tons of emails, and I'm way behind. Thanks, Max. Appreciate it. God bless you, and good luck with everything. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out my website, our Truth uh, Skin Health Products at truthtreatments.com. And also, if you're interested in joining me in my mission to educate and help the world about the power of nutrition and nutrition, nutritional supplementation, call 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben team. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. 